and welcome to Drawing with the Blakelys. I am Dad. And I am Charlie, I guess. And Charlie, I guess. Oh no. What are we, <laughs> what are we drawing today? I guess Harold? Harold, the Scarecrow from Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. How fitting that we're recording this on Halloween. I'm going to be doing a scary character. But Dad, you say, we do scary characters every day. Yeah, but it's Halloween Yeah. today Yeah. of recording. You may or may not be watching this on Halloween, but that's when we are doing it. And that's when I'm planning to release it. Editor, please edit this part out if it's not released on Halloween. All right. So, thank you, you to... You are the editor. Thank you to Donovan Landis and Rylan Rylan for suggesting this. And, Charles, grab your pen. Let's get started. Um... So this handsome fellow, we're going to start by drawing ah, the area like around Max. your mask. Oh, that's a nice thing to say about your own brother. Well, of course I'm going to say it about So he's got kind of sunken eyes. Now I should say that we are uh, drawing this based on the Stephen... The OG Gamel. thing from the book. Yep, the original illustrations from the book. If you're coming here because you're a fan of the movie, well, that's also good because clearly, if you've seen the movie, you know that the look of our friend here, whose nostrils we are currently drawing, uh, was heavily inspired by... It's a movie about the book. Of course it's heavily inspired. I'm not just talking about the movie itself. I'm talking about the look of... Harold in the movie. Well, yeah. Of course it's gonna look like it did in the book. I would yeah. agree. I mean, it doesn't have to be, though. Alright, so he did his ear up here on top, and now I'm gonna define his jawline here. All the way down. Let's go all the way down his neck. The same thing over here on this side. Kind of meet up there. He's got kind of a. The funny thing is, this guy kind of actually reminds me a little bit of your great grandfather, my grandpa, who was a farmer. He kind of looked, let's say, vaguely like our buddy here. My boy. Get kind of a scar there. Some stitching. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do his sort of hairline here. But keep in mind there's gonna be a lot of like lines like this. Ha individual hairs kind of spreading out. And now let's see if we can't kind of define his hairline. A little bit here. We don't have to actually define every, define every single hair. Excuse me. Oh, should probably leave some room for that other ear. Because we can come in here, as we're shading, we'll come in here and just sort of fill in a lot of the space. But we can still have some of these longer strands coming out like that. Honestly, at this point, he kind of looks more like Leatherhead than he does, or Leatherface than he does like a real scarecrow. But that's okay. He's got kind of a leather facey look to him here. Now, the next part I think I want to define. This is awesome, Charles. Is the pole that he's on here. I won't go too far down. But he is, in our reference image, tied, secured. Onto that pole. Mm 
And then get some kind of stuff coming up like that. I don't know, that's maybe this part of his collar. And then come down here like this for his arm. Here. Yeah, this is just uh, based on this uh, Stephen Gamel drawing, but I want to modify mine a little bit. I never loved how much his legs are like out to the side, and so I think what I'm going to do is actually draw him a little bit more straight down. His fingers here. side too since it's giving me more or less open and now the other side of his collar here with some kind of I think straw spilling out there and we'll connect here with his waistline and then in our reference image, he does have a belly sticking out. Some stitches there along that. And a belly button. So it's going to make me wonder why anyone actually thought this was a real scarecrow and not just a human being. Because no one was there to see it. Just out in the middle of a random farmer's field. There's kind of the fly of his pants there. his other arm coming down. Like that. Oops. Battery is running just a little bit low on our laptop, hopefully. That won't die before we're done. Guess I'm gonna lose our reference image. I don't know about you, Charles, but I'm not great without a reference image to look at. Awesome, Charlie. I, get, I know I said it before, Mom. but I love your line work. All right. This is kind of where we're going to depart a little bit from the Stephen Gamel illustrations because I'm uh, his legs would normally be going really out to the side, whereas I'm going to have him going more up and down. Some straw coming in that leg, and then what it looks like happened here is that this end used to be bound up, but it kind of came loose. The other end, however, is actually still. Uh, intact so as we bring down this leg we're still gonna have that uh, knotted rope on the end with the kind of frayed fabric going beyond where it's tied off and then some more stocks of um, Oops, I never came back and finished this, I just realized. Okay. We can... Continue this down.
And then I'm not going to recreate all the grass around it, but to make some sort of impression of, uh, you know, the sort of straw or hay, wheat, whatever that he is, that his pull is stuck into. And the key is kind of a stroke of your pen that does that, and then comes kind of comes back a little bit on the end, so it does uh, recreate that look of a um, of a bit of straw. And I feel like I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Just give a little bit more of a suggestion of a few details up here, and a lot of the rest of this will just be shading. I feel pretty good about ours, Charlie. Mm -hmm. I think yours looks awesome, dude. I know I say this like every time, Charlie, but I'm always impressed by the work that you do. I'm panting. Why? Because this is the 1987 Let's color. I can't move. I'm somehow I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, you haven't fallen down yet. I can't fall down. I have fallen and I can't get up. Awesome. Well, we'll continue. We'll finish this up without Charlie, apparently. Uh, uh oh no. So there's Harold. Out. Have a happy Halloween, boys, and safe uh, Halloween. Have fun trick or treating Wait, as we will. I thought it was Christmas. What are you talking about, bro? It's Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's where the leprechauns bust into your house and steal your teeth and give you green milk. Well, you go I think you're thinking of something else, but okay. What are you talking about, man? Anyway, boy, don't you guys wish you were here to experience these shenanigans firsthand? Well, I mean, of course you wouldn't. We're, uh... Totally here, ha <laughs> ha Yep, he's I meant the I meant the kids at home, the folks at home. But... That was awesome. Well, on your screen, you should see our logo. Go ahead and click on that to subscribe. The Ring the bell, and you will be notified each and every time that we put out a new one of these videos. And don't forget to very very gently tap the like button. Don't forget to check your candy for razor blades, knives, and wooden spears the size of your bag. That's right. Any candies that do not contain razor blades, please return for a more lethal treat. Turn it all the candy Until next time, friends. Goodbye. Goodbye.